Hi everyone, it's Chloe here and I'm the owner, maker and creator of Emmy Creations and welcome back to my channel. Before I start today's video, I would like to shout out a massive thank you to Tokyo Treats and Securia Co for sponsoring this video. I'm so excited about receiving these two new treat boxes because they contain some of my favorite snacks. For those who don't know what Tokyo Treats and Securia Co are, they are treat boxes containing the yummiest Japanese treats, allowing you to enjoy Japan in the comfort of your own home. Tokyo Treats is a Japanese subscription box that contains 20 exclusive limited edition and seasonal treats that are available in Japan for a limited time only. While Securico is a monthly authentic Japanese snack subscription box that supports local Japanese snack makers. It contains 20 traditional snack teas and special Japanese tableware. So for this month, the theme for these boxes is New Year's. Tokyo Treat is literally a snacking party box. It has so many of my favorite snacks, like the deep fried mochi. But what I was most excited about was the CC lemon drink. This is the best drink for hangovers. The Sukuri Co theme is New Year's in Hiroshima, which is one of my favorite cities and has some of the most delicious snacks. I had to eat the lemon mochi first, so soft and so lemony. The box also comes with a cute traditional wrapping cloth as well, which I'm excited to use. And also each box also contains a booklet explaining all the snacks and allergen information. It also contains information about Japanese culture as well. These boxes are honestly the perfect gift to start the new year. If you are interested, just head over to the description box below to purchase these amazing treat boxes. Also, don't forget to use my code for a special discount. So the market has finally happened and I finally recovered. It's actually Friday today, so it's taken me five days to fully recover from the two day long market, which is, um, I guess that's quite normal. Usually it takes me around three days to recover after one day. So, so yeah, I'm finally ready to sit down and chat to you guys about how the two days went and also um, my earnings and how much I sold and what didn't sell. Um, so yeah, so I guess I will start with just talking about how the two days went. Um, so day one was on Saturday and that was the 44 degree day that um, Sydney was experiencing, which was, I think it was the hottest day um, this year. And get this summer literally just started as well so we're gonna be in for a really hot one over here so uh but yeah it was 44 degrees um luckily we were indoors and not outdoors and the venue that our hosts um provided did say they had air conditioning but on the day i think because um, even if the, I, I knew the air conditioning was on because the air conditioning unit was right above my table and there was water dripping from the unit. So I know that the air conditioning was, what, air conditioning was on, but I think because the doors, the entry doors were always open. So a lot of the hot air kept coming in. Um, and so the cool air couldn't really, you know, do much. And also there was a lot of people. Um, I don't know if you remember or if you watched my previous video, I did say there were over 2000 people who booked um, the free tickets to attend the event. But on the day, they also did allow people to walk in. So there were thousands of, not thousands, but you know, at least over a thousand people that attended the event. And body heat can add to the heat as well. So it was an extremely, extremely warm day. Everyone, all the artists, all the storeholders were just fanning themselves. Some people were really smart to bring electric fans. We didn't, we didn't have our fans, but we did bring a little cooler bag with ice packs in there for to keep our drinks cool. And we thought of the ingenious idea of putting the ice packs on our heads and our necks and our body. And honestly, that was better than a paper fan. Um, so if you ever have a market on a really hot summer day, 
over you know 35 degrees 40 degrees i definitely suggest bringing a cooler bag uh, with ice packs in there i think we packed like six ice packs uh, which was enough for me and my hubby to you know um, share the ice packs between the two of us throughout the day to keep ourselves cool and not overheat and i'm someone who's actually prone to heat stroke as well and i did not have any signs or symptoms of heat stroke that day just because I had like eight bottles of water with me um, between the two of us really because um, the hosts also provided cool drinks for us and ice cream which really saved us that day um, but yeah always bring a cooler bag with ice packs at least six packs a lot of water at least ten bottles I would say and um, if the day gets too warm, use those ice packs and just put them on your neck, on your face, on your head, on your back, rub them on your arm and you feel like you're in an air conditioned room. Um, but yeah, it was an extremely warm day and I was really surprised by how many people turned out you know, to the event, I turned up to the event despite the heat. So day one was, I had pretty good sales that day as well. Um, and the setting up process was really quick, really easy. Hubby helped me so much with setting up. Luckily the venue, they provided the table and chairs, so we didn't really have to carry too much. Um, and like I showed you guys in my previous video, I had my trolley, my very handy trolley, so we didn't have to lift anything. All we had to do was roll everything in and that was it so setup was really quick really easy um and yeah my spot in the venue was also a really good spot as well it was so the venue had skylights so you can probably and that also contributed to the heat as well because yeah the, the whole roof, like half of the roof had skylights and some people were in the sun and some of us were in the shade i was really lucky to be in the shade i can't imagine how hot it would have been if i had if i had the sun hitting me as well as having all that hot air in the room so i'm really lucky that i had a bit of a shady spot and didn't have to experience the direct sun on me um but yeah so day one was smooth besides the heat and our hosts were so you know so um they took really good care of us you know providing water throughout the day and also providing as many ice blocks as we wanted and lots of cool drinks and stuff so they were exceptional that was so good um so so yeah and then day two rolled along and day two was also a fairly warm day but it was not 44 degrees hot it was around i think the it was supposed to be 29 degrees i think that was what my husband told me yes it was supposed to be 29 degrees but it was humid it was so humid because it actually rained in the morning and in Sydney, when it rains and it's a pretty warm day, the humidity is extremely high. And I think the humidity was probably around like 80%. So it was still very, very warm. Like when we arrived in the morning, the venue, you could feel the air conditioning finally. And everyone thought it was going to be freezing cold. But as soon as the event started, doors were opening, you know, people were rushing in. And also the crowd on Sunday was a lot more than Saturday um, for obvious reasons because one it wasn't as hot and um, two they did open up more ticket allocations and so more people actually attended on Sunday um, but it was still very warm and we made the mistake on Sunday not bringing our esky bag because we thought it was going to be a much cooler day um, but luckily we did bring a lot of water with us and the Hoo Hoo team and our host did come around bring cold drinks again which was really good <laughs> because we really really needed that because we didn't have our cooler bag but we did bring two electric fans so I I think that gave us a little bit of comfort, but it wasn't as hot as Saturday. Um, but still, we we kind of regretted not bringing our cooler bag with us. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Note to self, even if it's going to be 29 degrees, still bring an esky bag with, like, a cooler bag with some ice blocks in there. And, um, not ice blocks, like, uh, ice packs in there. So that, you know, at least you can keep yourself warm and keep your drinks cool and you can be more comfortable. So, 
But yeah, Sunday was an extremely, extremely busy day. Um, and I forgot to add, on Saturday I actually sold out on my kits. I sold out on my baby Siu Long Bao as well. And I actually sold a lot of the toys, which I'll actually go through the numbers with you later. But after Saturday and then coming home, I had to quickly pack extra kits and find any spare toys I might have missed at home so that I could sell them on Sunday because my table just looks so bare because so many toys had sold on the first day. Um, and so I made the extra kits, I found a few extra toys and I decided to bring my macrame keychains with me to fill up any table space that was blank or that was you know blank table space and I'm glad that I did because after the first two hours my table was so bare my husband was like I think you need to bring those keychains out you need to you know you know fill up your table so that it doesn't look so empty um so yeah so that's what we did on Sunday and I had to we had to kind of reorganize everything just to make it look a bit more full again um because after Saturday it was not full anymore <laughs> so um definitely I thought I I had enough stock because there were a lot of toys I had a lot of toys and I'll talk I'll go through the numbers like I said before in terms of how much I bought with me um but yeah like it, there were a lot of toys but then a lot of people did buy them and so on Sunday we just had to try to find a way to make everything look like nothing was sold yet <laughs> just so that people were still interested um and because my baby silong bar was sold out on saturday i actually had to make them throughout the day on sunday so i was crocheting like a machine <laughs> and people were watching me crochet and i could just see the eyeballs on me and i could just hear people whispering oh my gosh it's so fast whoa how is she crocheting so fast and i could just hear it all and i'm just like please don't watch me crochet because i'm gonna make a mistake um because i get nervous when people watch me crochet and i don't do it as a performance or as entertainment i was doing it because people were requesting the silong bao and i had run out and i felt really bad and so i wanted to please my customers and so I was crocheting them throughout the day and I think I managed to make extra six, I think. Let me see. Oh no, I don't I didn't print it out, but I think I made extra six silong bao that day. And while, you know, you know, um attending to customers as well, while um, you know, taking price tags off, while paying like receiving money and all of that, while doing all those, you know, other things, I was still crocheting. Luckily, my husband knew when to take over because he could see that I was a little bit stressed out about it because I'll have a customer come up and they'll be like, can I have the Silong Bao? Um, how long will it take you? And I'll give them an honest answer and, you know, they'll say, um, I probably won't stay that long. Can you do it a little faster? And then I'm like, okay, you know, this challenge accepted. I'm going to do this. And, and then I <laughs> happily agree and say, yes, come back in an hour and I'll be done in an hour. <sighs> yeah, I felt a little bad <laughs> because I saw them do two loops <laughs> before I was even done. So I was like, I'm so sorry. But they were very happy that I did put in the effort to make the toys. For them on the spot and other artists also came around to you know talk to me and say wow like just watching you is insane and I'm just like thank you but I was I was really under the pressure that day so I was probably crocheting the fastest I ever crocheted in my whole entire life <laughs> um but yeah I also feel like definitely bringing your crochet work with you on your market days definitely gives you gives people a bit more of a sense of like an appreciation for the craft as well and for you and as an artist because they they kind of realize oh it's all handmade and you know you have this skill and this talent to make something and they appreciate it a lot more especially when they're seeing it in real time 
um, because a lot of them don't really see you making a toy. So I think if you ever do an artist market, definitely bring your crochet um, materials with you, your hook and your yarn, and just crochet because people will, you know, they will watch you and they will learn about the craft and they will appreciate you as an artist and the craft as well. And you never know, you might get a sale out of it. So that was extremely entertaining. And by the end of the day, and the thing is, Sunday was so busy. I didn't realize how fast the time went by. By the time it was like 1.30, so the market started at 11. I didn't even realize the time just flew by. And it was like 1.30 when I realized, oh, I need to eat. I need to have some lunch. But then we just didn't have time to really like sit down and just chill for a moment <laughs> i did have a chance to eat thank goodness and my husband would take over to you know tend to customers and things so so yeah it really helped that my hubby was there to support me that day and really he was the real mvp of the day he did so much for me and like i can't even like i'm not even exaggerating by how much he did he literally helped me set up the whole store like i did one half and he did the other half and then he tended to customers when i wasn't paying attention because i was probably talking to another customer um he didn't really remember all the prices of my toys which i don't blame him for but he kind of figure out my system and he kind of learned how i um you know um you know responded to my customers and stuff so he kind of mimicked that and he he was a very fast learner which was really good so and he you know went on all the food runs or the drink runs um when i needed to go to the bathroom he took over so it he was really the you know his husband of the year i need to make him a little award and just give it to him <laughs> and just call him husband of the year because he really 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 is and he's helped me in all of my markets and I think you've seen him pop up in every single one of my market videos because he's actually rocked up to every single one of them which is absolutely amazing because I never like I always tell him you don't have to be there all the time because I know how bored he gets but he's always saying that he wants to help me where I need help and wants to support me and wants to be there and keep me company even though I know he's like bored as hell so but I think this market he was definitely not bored one bit because he was just on his toes the whole time so he he even joked with me he was like I've worked seven days a week and now so to like yesterday he said to to a few of my friends i've been working for 13 days straight <laughs> i feel so bad because i didn't really pay him anything i just paid him in food i paid for his his food and he ate a lot which i will go through in the numbers as well because it was just by myself i would not spend this much on food but because he was there he was just eating constantly he even went to the supermarket and bought a whole box of ice cream and he ate the whole box by himself and i just couldn't believe it i was just like what the <laughs> like how do you even have the energy to eat um but yeah anyways it was a really good two days besides the heat and the humidity but it was an extremely amazing market. The hosts, Ashley and Celine, the hosts of Hoo Hoo, they did amazing organizing everything. They were so organized as well. They had so many um, fun events set up as well. There was like a sticker making event, um, sticker making space that they created. So people kind of got sticker paper and they drew on it and they cut it out and they were able to make their own stickers. And then there was a free photo booth area. There was also like a sticker rally that we all did. So um, customers would have to purchase from like six different stores um, and they collect stickers on their card. And once they collect all the stickers, they can redeem um, unlimited free photo booth um, um, uh, photos. And they also receive like a pack of stickers and stuff as well. So. It was a very fun event and they also had a number of sponsors as well sponsoring the event which made it even better so so yeah overall it was 
the best market I've ever done, honestly. I um, met some amazing artists. I um, couldn't meet all of them because we were so busy and, you know, just um, finding a chance to talk to everyone was very hard. So hopefully next time if I ever do another art market like this one, um, I will try and, you know, talk to each artist if I can. Um, but yeah, overall, amazing market. Would love to do it again. Um, probably I should be more prepared in terms of my stock. Um, I would probably pack a lot more kits because uh, my kits actually sold out in the first two hours and I didn't realize that my kits would be so popular because they've never been that popular in my other markets that I've done. So I guess um, now that I know then I probably need to pack three times more kits than I did uh, for day one. So day one I packed around 12 kits or no, yeah, 12 kits on for day one I packed 10 kits for day two so there was a total of like 22 kits um, but I think if I was to do another mark I'll probably need to pack like 50 kits or something to take with me on the day and if there's leftovers then I just sell them online um, so yeah that's something that I realized and again I know what my best-selling toys are and it's my Siwa Long Bao and I knew this would happen and I knew I would run out but I just didn't have the capacity to make more so if I was to be more prepared and the thing is I could have been really prepared with this market because I was accepted into this market six months prior <laughs> so I'm a little bit unorganized I think I can't help myself um, but yeah, if I was to, you know, change anything, then I would definitely probably make more toys throughout the year um, so that I can have more toys for like a market like this, like a two day long market, um, rather than trying to make or make a lot of the Silong Bao toys, you know, the week prior or two weeks prior to the market. Um, so yeah, I probably need to change that, I think, but it's so hard because I have other things that I need to do and I prioritize other things as well. So, so yeah, but, um, it, and the thing is with every market, it is a learning experience for me. So now that I know with this type of market, with like an art market, this is the market I attended was an art market. So there was a lot of people selling stationery, a lot of cute things. So knowing that this particular market, my kits and my silong bar will sell out. Um, and also anything related to Totoro um, would sell out. I almost forgot my coasters sold out as well and I only had four. Um, but anything related to anything cute will sell out. So I just need to, you know, keep a memo in my mind that I need to make more of those cute things uh, because those are what um, attract people the most especially at these art markets um, so yeah anyways I think I should probably talk about my numbers now which I am assuming is what you guys are all really curious about and um, I have it all here I did it in an Excel spreadsheet but I just you know printed the summary of everything that I earned everything that I bought and all the fees as well so so yeah it was a very, like I said before, it was a very good market, my most successful market to date. So great way to end the year, I would say, and it's my last market for the year as well. So um, in terms of day one, the amount of toys that I bought, I actually bought 246, oh no, to not toys, I should say items, because I didn't just bring toys, I also bought cards, stickers, um, uh, coasters, uh, kits so I didn't just bring toys I did bring a variety of things so in terms of total items that I took to the market on day one it was 246 items and the value of those items um, came down to $5,086.40 so I took over $5,000 worth of stock um, for day one and I, at the end of day one I sold how much let's see total total so oh no I should probably say okay so out of the 246 items there were 93 toys that I brought on the day um which was worth so my toys so only 93 toys but 
in terms of the value of those toys, it came down to $3,837.90. So it was actually like my toys, I don't, they're not the cheapest item there. <laughs> my toys are quite, you know, I think I priced them fairly. Um, because a lot of the toys that I did sell, they were made during my designing process and I'm just, you know, getting, you know, rid of them so that I can make more room for, you know, future toys. And like I probably say all the time, <laughs> I live in a one bedroom apartment. There's not a lot of space to store these toys. If I had more room, I probably wouldn't be selling them because, you know, they're my pride and joy because I created them. I didn't birth them, but like, you know, I'm the creator of those. So um so i do price them fairly and i probably don't price them as high as i would for a custom order for example um but yeah so there were 93 toys i bought on day one which were valued at three thousand eight hundred thirty seven dollars and ninety cents and after day one there were 160 items remaining and there were 62 toys remaining um so after day one i sold 31 toys um which was which i would say is quite quite a lot i would say selling 31 toys because i usually sell around the same amount um on a one day long market and in terms of the total revenue after day one, it was $1,717.82. So that is actually a lot better than my, the, actually that's like really good compared to all my other markets that I've done. Usually when I do markets at Coco Kawaii Cafe, for example, I always earn just over 1000 and at the Kiribili markets, I always vary between $700 to $1,000. So even just day one of the Hoo Hoo Art Market, I earned $1,717.82, uh, which I was so surprised. I was like, holy crap, like if I earned that much on day one, what is day two going to be? And I'm going to tell you guys right now. So... For day two, and if you remember me saying I had to pack extra kids, I had to find extra toys, I had to grab my macrame keychains. So the beginning of day two, I started with 197 items. So um, from 160 to 197, I bought an extra 37 items for day two. So still, it was like, you know, 50 items less than what I bought for day one. So I was still a little bit worried. Um, and then in terms of toys, I only bought an extra, um, eight toys apparently, which why don't I remember what those eight toys were? <laughs> I think I was just running on adrenaline and my memories is really bad. But anyway, so in total, I bought 70 toy, uh, toys, um, on the day, um, out of the 197. And then in terms of how much I sold that day, so remaining, I had 116 items remaining. And in terms of toys remaining, I only had 29 toys remaining. So if my maths is right from this Excel spreadsheet, I sold 41 toys on day two. So day one, I sold 31 toys. Day two, I sold 41 toys. So I sold 10 extra toys. Um... And you can see in the video that my table was bare at the end of day two. And I didn't even try to, you know, make more seal long bar because one seal long bar would not make a difference. Well, I mean, it would make a bit of a difference because I would have gone extra, you know, 20 something dollars. But I was just so exhausted by the time it was 3.30. I was just like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just going to, you know, leave my desk as, leave my store as it is. If people are interested in anything, then they can definitely buy it. But I'm not going to add any more items onto my table. Um, and the event ends at like 5. It ended at 5 and I was already, you know, done at 3.30. Um, but yeah, so in terms of revenue for day two, I earned... $2,193.72. Like, what? <laughs> I earned, like, 
I, I, I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy crap. Um, I doubled what I would usually earn in my other markets in this one day. And I just couldn't believe it. I was so shocked. Like, I was checking, I didn't even check my transaction history throughout the day. And that's what I usually do at my markets so that I can see that I'm reaching my goals. And that day, because it was so busy, I did not have a chance to look at it at all until I kind of finally stopped crocheting and finally just thought, you know, I think my day is done. And I looked at my phone and, well, my husband looked at it actually, and he said, you, you, you earned over $2,000 today. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> I couldn't believe it at all. So it was insane. So in total, in terms of items sold, I sold 130 items in total across the two days. And in terms of, um, toys sold, I, so if you remember, I actually took with me a total, including the, the toys I bought extra. Um, I actually took a hundred and one toy. 101 toys over the two days and I sold 72 toys which is crazy that is insane that's like 70% of my toys were sold um and I just couldn't believe it and in terms of total revenue from that the two days I made just under four thousand dollars so three thousand nine hundred and eleven dollars and fifty four cents so that's just you know ninety dollars shy of four thousand dollars, which is absolutely crazy because I don't think I've ever seen this kind of you know money from you know just selling at a market ever um so that also goes to show how successful this market is. Um, so I definitely would put my name down for any future art markets like um, Hoo Hoo Art Market, which is what I was at. There's also other ones like um, Mellow Art Market, which is also really popular, which runs in Sydney and Melbourne. And then there's another one, which Momo, Momo Art Market, which is another one which always has like over 80 artists selling in a really large venue. So if I was to focus on these art markets and kind of just do, you know, one or two per year, I would be very happy, <laughs> I think, um, rather than doing a lot of, you know, not so well um, markets. But I think I've been quite fortunate that most of the markets I've done, I've made a profit and not a loss. So, so yeah, I'll see. I'll see how next year goes. But um, yes, art markets are going to be my go-to. <laughs> and if you're in Sydney and you're a, you know, artist yourself, definitely look into those three art, um, art markets I just mentioned. So the Hoo Hoo Art Market, the Mellow Art Market, and the Momo Art Market. Those are very popular. There are a lot of artists and a lot of people show interest in those art markets as well so definitely give them a like check them out on instagram so you can see what they've done in previous years uh, but i know for sure that those are the markets that i'll probably be aiming to work towards and be attending if i'm able to attend them um so yeah so total revenue at the end of the two days was three thousand nine hundred and eleven dollars and fifty four cents so very happy about the earnings and now I'm going to go into the fees because this is not my gross revenue. This is my total revenue without any of the expenses deducted. So now I'm going to tell you guys what my gross profit is and um, this is purely just fees and GST. It does not include um, my um, like tax that I have to pay at the end of the financial year, but I can probably calculate that as well really quickly in my head. Um, so yeah, so I had a lot of fees that I had to cover. So square fees, which is my square reader for people who paid in card, that was $61.35. 
I also um, have to pay GST because like I mentioned in my previous video, um, I earn more than $75,000 a year. So because of that, I my business has to pay GST, so good services tax to the government, which is at 10%. And so I added that to my toys as well because 10% is a lot and people are aware that they have to pay a GST. Um, and the good thing about in Australia is like everything that you buy includes the GST. So, but then for me, it was just easier for me just to say $20 plus GST and then I do the maths or they can do the maths. And usually I just do the maths for them and they're usually very... And the thing is, my customers were very accepting of the fact that I had to charge GST and they did not complain. Um, they knew and thank goodness my tags made it very clear. So they were still willing to pay uh, for the toy, even though it said $20 plus the GST, which meant it was $22. Um, and they were they were still willing and accepting of the fact that they had to pay a little bit more because of the GST. So... I'm, I was really worried about that, actually. I was worried that people would not like that. But I think in Australia, people know that you, we are charged a GST and we do pay that. So, and, um, and business owners have to pay the government that GST. So, so yeah, so I'm really thankful that they were really um, understanding and um, didn't complain at all once. I did have a, a really funny conversation with a customer and I, I, I think I was just so tired, I think. And I just said, man, I really hate this GST. And then the customer just said, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and then they kind of said, but doesn't that mean that you're earning enough to be paying GST to the government? And I was like, yeah, I am. And then we just had a laugh. <laughs> because um and then they said but doesn't that also mean that you had a higher tax bracket when you have to do your taxes and i'm like yeah i am <laughs> and then they also and then they added i was like oh that just that just means you're successful and i'm just like yeah that's true but it just hurts sometimes knowing that i have to pay more tax because i am earning more <laughs> but um i shouldn't complain because it just means that my business is doing well enough for me to be paying a certain amount of tax um so yeah, in terms of the GST, I have to pay $391.15. Um, the market fee for the two days was $200, which I would say is really good considering they provide the, t uh, the tables and the chairs and it was an indoor venue as well. Um, and then insurance, I paid for um, PLI, so public liability insurance. Um, of $10 million and the insurance fee was $21.52 um, per month. So I bought it for the month only because I only needed it for those two days. And the good thing about PLI insurance and when you do research into it, you can find insurance companies that will allow you to pay for, um, purchase it for only the month or you can pay for a whole year depending on how often you would sell at markets. Um, so for me, I paid for the month. I pay on a monthly basis and when I know that I'm not going to do my markets anymore, I'll just cancel my um, public liability insurance and there will be no extra charges when I cancel the the insurance as well. So um so yeah, so $21.52 uh, $21 for insurance, food, which majority was really for my hubby. <laughs> it was $118.43 over two days. Like I was like, what did I eat? I just had curry. I just had Japanese curry and I checked the price of that and it was not, you know, it wasn't even over $25. It was less than that. Um, so I asked my husband what he ate and then I saw, he gave me all the receipts and then I was like, why were there so many receipts? And I could see that he bought like, you know, rice paper rolls and then he got hungry again and went and bought pork roll and then he got hot and then we, he went and bought ice cream and then, you know, he just kept looking for food and he bought steamed buns and he just kept looking for food and he even had like some Japanese, like a sushi bowl, like a, yeah, sushi bowl or something, it's, um, like like a, uh, I forgot what it is, but anyways, but yeah, he ate so much food, but you know, he deserved it. He was using a lot of energy that day, so I don't mind paying him in food and love 
as well. <laughs> um, and then there was petrol fee, which was around $50. Um, parking fee, I did pay for parking for day one, only because I didn't want our black car to be in the scorching sun um, for the whole day. So I just told Hubby, I was like, you know what, Just let's just park inside where it's covered and shaded and the car won't be too hot. Um, and I'll just cover it. I'll just cover for the um, parking fee because I can use that as a deduction for when I do my taxes for my business. And the parking fee was $40.80. And that is not cheap. <laughs> um, but I was willing to fork that out because it was such a hot day. And I did not want to get into a stinking hot car at the end of the day. Just, just, I'm just being really frank. So, <laughs> um, so in terms of my total fees, it actually came down to $883.25. So I guess I did spend quite a bit on the market. Um, and luckily I did make a good earning. So it didn't feel so painful. <laughs> but in terms of expenses, if I was to show you guys the top expense. So top expense was the GST. The next highest expense was the market fee. And then the next one was the food fee. <laughs> So I was just like, what? <laughs> but it's okay. I'm fine with that. Um, so my gross profit actually comes down to $3,028.29. And uh, $3 um, that's my gross profit. If I was to calculate my actual net profit after my taxes, and I think my tax bracket is at 30%, then my earnings would be roughly around, oh, just probably 2000 I can't really do maths right now. My brain is a bit fried. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to try it, but it will be in the 2000s. <laughs> because I don't want to give you guys a false number. But my gross profit is $3,028.29. Uh, $3, so overall, a very very successful market um and I'm, I'm extremely happy with how everything turned out so and i just want to do a really quick thank you to everyone who purchased from me who stopped by my store to say hi i know some of you guys watch my youtube videos and you guys you know approached my store and told me and i was extremely happy that you guys follow me on youtube and just follow my you know small business journey um and i try to be as honest and transparent as possible and try and share as much um knowledge and information as I can as I learn myself so it was really nice meeting you guys I also met a lot of people who followed my Instagram already and I had really great business conversations with you guys and I said this to everyone who approached me is like you know if you have any questions about running a crochet business or even just a small business like just hit me up on my uh, instagram and i will answer any of your questions and i usually will link you guys to a youtube video if i've answered some of those questions through a youtube video so that i can be more in depth um but yeah, it was really nice talking to you guys. Thank you to my husband who supported me through all the markets in the year and especially the last two, like the, the last one, like the Hoo Hoo Art Market because honestly, this was the toughest market that we've ever done because one, it was extremely hot and two, it was across two days and three, the crowds were insane. There were, you know, 2,000 people or more, I would say, probably like, probably close to 3,000 people rocking up to this market. So it was an intense two days and my husband did so well to support me and to keep me entertained and I really need to do something for him because I'm, I just, I'm just so thankful. Um, and, I feel like he's done so much for me in like, you know, in the time that we've been together. So, so to my husband, thank you so much. And I love you. Um, he's not going to really see this, but 
I will, I will tell him. <laughs> I tell him every day. Um, and then to, um, the hosts of Hoo Hoo, Celine and Ashley, you guys did so amazing organizing this and also to the helpers that, um, that were there too. They were all wearing really cute pink shirts. So we knew that they were, um, volunteers as well. And they volunteered, they volunteered to help at the Hoo Hoo Art Market and, they were the, they walked around checking up on us and making sure that, it, that we were all okay. Um, and yeah, I think I, I think that's everyone. I can't, I can't really remember, but, um, oh yes. And my in-laws also visited me. They visited me on the two days. They've even brought their friends as well to support me, which was really lovely. So thank you to my mother and father-in-law. Um, and yeah, just, Massive thank you to everyone, especially to the people on my channel as well for, you know, just following on this journey. And I really hope that this video has given you guys some insight into, you know, um, things to do and also things not to do. I don't know if I went through that, actually. I kind of just went on and had a little bit of a ramble and just, just started talking. Um, but yeah, I guess in things to do, definitely have enough stock for a two day long market. Um, kits actually sell very well at art markets. Um, the smaller toys, so like keychains and stuff, like keychains and my baby silver bar, they sell really, really well. The Totoro, anything Totoro related also sells very well. So all my Totoro keychains, um, and coasters and toys all sold out. So I had no more, to like nothing, nothing of Totoro was left. Um... So if I was to do another market, I would definitely make a lot more Totoro stuff. And then what else? I also noticed that the bigger toys didn't sell as well. So the the gigantic bunny that you would have seen and also the big round, um, you know, bunny and um, bear and pig, those didn't really sell. Um, I don't know if it's because it was too expensive. Even then, because I did sell some items that were like $80 and um, people who purchased the items that were $80 really appreciated the craft of crochet because they would, they can see the detail that I put into it. So they were more than happy to pay for it. Um, but yeah, I realized with these art markets, smaller toys definitely sell better. So if you are, planning an art market or you're planning a market definitely make smaller toys that can fit in your hand so the um little whales the extra whales that i made the octopus and the little mushrooms those all sold out i didn't make that many of them but i know if i made more they would still sell really well so yeah, definitely try and have as many smaller items there and just have a few larger items just to get people's attention, I guess. So I think the larger items definitely got people's attention, but then they were more drawn to purchasing the smaller items. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. This is, this is an extremely long video. I just realized it's like 45 minutes long and I've been talking for 45 minutes straight, which I don't usually do. I don't usually talk this much. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to end this video right here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this market update video on how my Hoo Hoo Art Market uh, went. Um, if you have any questions about this video, just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and also, I think this will probably be the last YouTube video for the year. So... I wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I'll see you all next year. Bye!